Our first season at Saprissa in Costa Rica was amazing. We did the double and have once again qualified for continental competitions. We have 16 and a half million in the transfer budget and over 50. 50,000 a week available in wages as we look to rebuild our team because somebody told us it sucks. I think someone described it to me as trying to win the top flight with a third tier team. Welcome back everyone to episode number 48 of the American Dream. I am Mr. Cellophane and we are set to completely revamp this Saprisa squad which on its face doesn't look all that bad. Yes, we had a ton of money in the January transfer window when we first joined the team, but we did not quite have a handle on what our team was. We didn't know where the weaknesses were. We didn't know where we would need to improve. But now, well, frankly, we do. And we had enough lackluster performances to tell us nobody is safe. Starting with goalkeeper, I think wholesale changes need to be made. We did bring in Manuel Cortez, a 28-year-old Colombian Honduran dual national, in during the transfer window because the guys that we had on the squad just we knew weren't going to cut it. We're going to talk about them more in just a second. However, he is taking up a valuable foreigner spot, and frankly, he's just mediocre, conceding 25 goals in 18 Premier Division appearances. Didn't do well in the CONCACAF Champions Cup, giving up three in two, well, in a 6.55 rating. Frankly, we can do better. Now, the guy who was in place when we first got here, Kevin Shamaro, we've already talked a lot about why he is not the solution. The biggest problem being his aerial reach is terrible. When we did play him, he was letting in goals that we feel like a normal goalkeeper who was six foot, by the way, should be able to make it. 30 years old, he's making over $4,000 a week. He is waiting for bids to come in from other teams. We haven't tried to sell him just yet. We are still a ways away from the transfer window. But you better believe that Kevin Shamaro's days at Saprissa are numbered. Same with David Hernandez, who I do need to give credit to. We may actually keep him around as a backup goalkeeper. One, he's Costa Rican, so he's not taking up one of those precious foreigner slots. He's also 21 years old, and he did the job for us when we needed him to. He managed to keep eight clean sheets in 14 appearances in the Primera División with a pretty decent rating. He's got some growing to do and some seasoning, but he might have to do that from our bench. Defensively is probably where we're currently strongest. We did pick up Hugo Cordero, a 19-year-old right back who looks to slot in as our right back for the future. Daniel Herrera, though, occupying that spot, also our right back for the future, but he is El Salvadoran, so even though he's 19, he's capped 13 times for his country. Do we want to use one of our very precious foreigner slots on a defensive position? And we do have a number of them, including 28-year-old Mexican Emilio Lara, who ended up falling out of favor with us because, again, too many foreigners on the squad. He is uh, probably as far down our depth chart as we would like to see a player, uh, especially as a 5'11 center back. So Lara, pretty sure he'll be gone. Also, probably not long for our squad is 28-year-old Nassim Innocenti. Now, he is currently out on international duty with Burkina Faso, but he makes $8,250 a week. Has some value to him, but we also have, as a foreigner on our back line, South African Ronald Gubane, who is a very similar player and probably has a bigger upside at the age of 21. And added into that mix is 21-year-old Costa Rican Freddy Gonzalez. Now, he has been playing as our left back, but as you can tell, he is just more naturally a center back, and I think we're going to give him the opportunity to play in that position in the year ahead. Although he is potentially worth $2 million, so maybe we can make a profit and assist in adding more depth elsewhere. In the defensive midfield, 19-year-old Stefan Akista has proved to be a breakout star for this team, and I think he's going to see a lot more playing time. He was rotating in with Alejandro Brand and Emmanuel Chacon. Now, Brand is going to be out of contract at the end of this season, and I don't think we are going to renew the 29-year-old. Yes, he's Costa Rican. Yes, he has 33 caps for his country, but I think maybe we can do better. 
We'll see if we get any offers in on Emmanuel Chacon. He's 26 years old. He's capped 11 times for Costa Rica. Could be a nice backup option. We do want to upgrade at this position, but we still need depth, and we need depth of Costa Rican players. Maybe he might stick around. Moving to the attacking midfield, one player that did impress me more than I thought he would is 21-year-old Diego Marrera. He played the number 10, but in a more support role in that enganche role that we basically used in the tactic because it best suited him as our top central attacking midfielder. But it has paid off dividends, 10 goals, 9 assists on the year. He has been incredibly solid, except after him, the depth up the middle kind of falls off. The play on the left wing was primarily split between Elian Casada Thorne and Ramon. We'll talk about Ramon in just a second. Casada Thorne, though, 25 years old and kind of a bang average player on his face. He did manage 12 goals and six assists, but I think we can increase the output from that position. Now, Ramon was a little bit of a revelation to us. He is Brazilian and 31 years old, so he's probably more towards the downside of his career. 12 goals, but the highlight was his 18 assists. His deliveries off of the corners were pretty fantastic, and a lot of his crossing to the back post was spot on. If he needs to stay with this team, I wouldn't be upset, but again, the left wing is a position that we are looking to improve. Ramon also got a fair few starts on the right wing. His primary competition for the position is 22-year-old Costa Rican Guillermo Sanchez, who is not as well suited for that advanced right wing position as he is maybe starting a little further back. Not really looking to make changes to the tactic. He's got a ton of pace on him. In fact, his physicals are fantastic. Aside from the jumping reach, even at five foot ten, he really cannot get into the air. He might not be a bad option for depth, but as a starter not so much also in the reserve role this year was 23 year old johnny castro 14 u20 caps for costa rica has not been able to crack into the senior team and frankly just didn't do as much for us as we would like in the position he made 30 total appearances nine of them starts only two goals and four assists an improvement can be made and finally, a position where we are looking to increase our depth and options is at the striker. Edward Lopez, the 22-year-old Nicaraguan Costa Rican dual national, did get the majority of the starts. In fact, he started 45 times in the position. 20 goals, 10 assists, pretty good output, if I must say. He does have some value to him, so if we were to move him on... That is an option. He is primarily Nicaraguan, but because of his dual nationality, he doesn't count as a foreigner, so another plus in his column. The other option at the position was equally as prolific. 21 goals in 50 appearances overall for Esteban Cordero. He is, again, a very solid player. We just need to add to these two guys and hopefully we will have an attack that is unprecedented in the Primera División. So we've got our scouts scouring Central America. Let's see what they find. Well, only a few days have passed, but already one player out the door. Kevin Chamorro is going to be joining Herediano, of all teams, when the transfer window opens up on July the 15th. $750,000 we got for him added to the kitty. We have also decided to trigger the extension clause for Alejandro Braun. Even though he's 29 years old, he is Costa Rican, so he fulfills that requirement, not taking up a foreign slot. And his leadership ability, or at least his leadership role on the club, we feel is important enough to maybe keep him around for another year, unless somebody wants to buy him from us. Because, of course, if we have the option of selling a player versus losing him for free, show me the money. Our search for a new goalkeeper is going a little bit more slowly than I thought it might, so we decided to turn to our former team only to find out George Marks retired at the age of 30 and is no longer available. Oh, baby, I love to see it. New scouting budget. We can now scout the world. With the start of the transfer window fast approaching and our scouting plan not quite working out the way that we were hoping it would, We've decided to start pilfering from our opposition. We're adding depth from the ranks of the Costa Rican players. First up is a 22-year-old with two Costa Rican caps, Juan Pablo 
Espinosa. Pretty good physicals, decent technicals as well. He can play anywhere up the right side of the pitch. We got him from Santos for 550000 we then decided to dip into the Herediano pot. They're taking our goalkeeper. We might as well get a player or two from them. 21-year-old Marvin Alfaro can play on either wing. He's got a fairly strong left foot, even though he is more natural on the right-hand side. A ton of pace and agility. He needs to work a little bit on his technical skills. The crossing and passing, not quite where we want them to be, but his off-the-ball is decent. His flair as well. Great technique. I think he's going to be an excellent addition to our squad. Also joining us from Herediano, 22-year-old William Ramirez. He is going to be vying for time with Diego Moreira at the 10. He's got tremendous mental abilities. His physicals are also very good. Agility, pace, right on point. A little bit shorter than I was probably hoping to find, but great technique, good passing ability. His vision is decent as well taking a bit of a punt on him is going to cost about 1.9 million dollars when all is said and done fixtures for the 2030 2031 season have been released we're going to open up the season at home at the end of the month of july against ad sarchi the two classico national derbies are taking place on september the 8th and november the 3rd third at least for the opening stage and the final day of the opening stage on november the 20th we take on santos on the road Meanwhile, the opening stage of the Primera División is not the only competition that we have to worry about at the end of the month. We are one of the pot one teams in the CONCACAF Central American Cup. Now, this is the feeder competition into the Champions Cup. So, Arediano is going to be in Group B. We are heading up Group C, Cartagenas, in Group D. Joining us is Honduran side Alancho FC. Who else will be in the group? Alawense is going into Group B along with Arediano. Municipal out of Guatemala. It's good to see that we're going to be seeing some teams from elsewhere around Central America, all with a lower reputation than us, I am sure. Nicaragua's Real Esteli also pulled into Group C along with H and H Export. This competition begins at the end of July, right after the start of the regular season. For the competition, each team is going to take on every other member of their group once the top two teams qualify for the quarterfinals. The fans are loving our new signings now that the transfer window is open. None more so than 22-year-old Ghanaian goalkeeper Mohamed Conte. Yes, he's a foreign player, but you know what? The goalkeeping selection in Costa Rica was, well, it was poor. We did have to pay his release clause because he had just signed a contract last season of 1.1 million that's fine he's also going to be our highest earner that is also fine because he is head and shoulders better than anybody else we had on our team very good aerial reaches handling abilities fantastic good with the one-on-ones nice reflexes good positioning a little bit shorter than we normally like gonna admit that but we think Mohamed Conte is going to be a massive massive upgrade in goal Meanwhile, there has been a ton of interest in Elian Casada Thorne. Already two bids received on him, matching his $1.3 million release clause. One from Al Riyadh, the other from Mexican side, Venedos. Looks like Casada Thorne will not be with us for next season. We've also agreed to a deal to loan out 28 year old foreigner Emilio Lara. He's going to be spending the season. In Dominica, there is an optional fee of 275000 Whether or not that gets executed this year doesn't really matter. One less foreigner that we need to deal with, especially one that wasn't even going to be registered for our squad. Sadly, another one of our wingers is going to be leaving the fold. Venados came in with an offer that we frankly could not refuse for Guillermo Sanchez. The 22-year-old was worth about $1.4 million on our squad. You can see his value has increased. Now that he's in Mexico, they offered us over $2 million plus 50% of the next sale. So our hands were tied. We just really could not say no. He was going to be unsettled if we didn't let him go. So we did. But when one door closes, another one opens as we have signed 27-year-old Dominican Republic, Argentina, and Costa Rica tri-national Michael Sambardo for a little bit of depth 
as our left back. We've already talked about moving Freddy Gonzalez into the center back position, which means Daniel Herrera, who has been our starting right back, is going to be sliding over to the left to give Cordero more opportunities on the right-hand side. We just wanted somebody who could back up in a pinch. We've got a ton of matches coming up. Decided it was a good piece of business. We do have more irons in the fire, but so far our transfer business has been a zero-sum game for the most part. 4.1 million players on their way out. 4.4 million worth of players coming in, well, actually already at the club. We still have more scouting to do. We've still got plenty of irons in the fire, and we've got about three weeks before our regular season is set to go underway. How many more moves are we going to have? Well, you're going to have to come back and find out. If you like that, make sure you hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. If you're brand new, welcome in. Hope you enjoy your stay. Check out some of our other videos like that one, and we will see you tomorrow for more of the American Dream. Until then, bye bye.